distributor or the user of the software. Not, not really to, to put uh, this policy uh, in the source code. We didn't want to modify any source code uh, to modify the policy. So what would be the main advantage? Uh, the main advantage is that you actually know what, uh, you, what security level is your operating system using in general. And uh, because I had to convince my boss, I, I wrote some reasons why we actually needed that. And I believe they're really, uh, they're also applicable uh, to Debian as a project, why we need uh, system-wide crypto policies. Uh, one advantage is that uh, we reduce the administrative, uh, the, the burden of the administrator of the user we're actually giving the system. Uh, why is that? If you have uh, deployed, let's say, uh, an HTTPS server or any kind of server which uses crypto, what are the best practices you have to do? Typically, you go to websites like bettercrypto.org, download the PDF uh, of 90 pages or even more, uh, read there how to set up your cipher suites in a way that uh, your level is acceptable for today's uh, standards and uh, modify your service to, to to support these advices. But why do you have to do that anyway? Why would you really have to go to this website, find these advices, uh, modify your service? Shouldn't that be offered by default by the operating system? I believe yes, and also it's reduced support costs by by using a consistent level across the operating system. You eliminate a class of vulnerabilities uh, that depends on uh, inconsistent parameters in libraries. For example, uh, if you have followed uh, lately, we had an attack on TLS called Long Jump that, depending dependent on some libraries, uh, let's say accepting uh, lower parameters than the others. So if we had a consistent policy. Uh, this kind of attack wouldn't be even be there. And the, the other thing is easier audit. That you, you don't really, you actually know that your programs, after you deploy such a policy, you know what algorithms your programs will use. They will be the configured uh, algorithms. So you, 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 can, you don't need, need to audit. So a little about uh, history, what we did in Fedora. Uh, we started in Fedora 21, that was last year, and uh, we piloted uh, system-wide crypto policies for as common policies for GNU TLS and OpenSSL. Uh, now, as a detail, we decided not to have just one default policy, but to give the administrator the option to have uh, one, of the th one of three policies. One was called Legacy, that was a bit insecure. It included uh, all algorithms. It even uh, enabled MD5. And the idea of the legacy was to, to be able to connect, to set up your system in a way that you can connect even on a network where you have uh, really 10-year-old uh, computers and you cannot connect to them otherwise. And the default level was uh, a bit conservative. It didn't have uh, algorithms that were considered to be broken. And uh, pretty much uh, it was about on 80 bits security level. Uh, we also provided the future security level that was around 111 one bits uh, security offered. But uh, that also meant that you couldn't connect to around 80% of the internet if you enabled this. So, uh, of course, the system came by default on the default level. And uh, we piloted on a few applications on Fedora 21, while on Fedora 22, we converted uh, several libraries and applications to, to use this uh, policy by default, uh, like Apache HTTPD, Lite HTTPD, uh, Lib Micro HTTPD, and also the command line applications uh, we shipped. In Fedora 23, we added also the BIND. Uh, software to, to the system wide crypto policies because uh, in DNSSEC you also use algorithms and uh, we would like to be able to restrict certain algorithms from being used in DNSSEC when they are considered broken. So w what was our approach? Every, all up to now was a bit theoretical but w what we actually did uh, if you have already set up a server using either OpenSSL or GNU TLS, you have uh, probably noticed that at some point it asks, uh, you have to specify a cipher suite string. 
for example, in OpenSSL, it can be like that uh, to enable the high level uh, cipher switch, except MD5 and such. In UTLS, it will be something uh, enable the normal cipher switch ex ex uh, uh, with only TLS 1.2 in this example, for example. And we figured that since we have uh, several applications, each and every having uh, these kind of strings or the, on the configuration files, why not uh, agree on a single string that we set on every application and uh, upon uh, when this string is encountered uh, by OpenSSL or uh, GNU-TLS, they will just load the default uh, system-wide uh, policy. So that's pretty much the idea. And the next step, we just uh, modified uh, most of the applications we ship to change the, the included by upstream, let's say, example configuration file to, to use our system-wide uh, policy string. Some problematic cases were the applications which hard-coded uh, their defaults into the code. And uh, in these cases, we just also modified the code to use uh, our shift policy, our default policy. Uh, that, that, that was a very brief description. If you want to see more uh, about this, uh, it's on that URL. And uh, ideally, we wanted to cover everything, let's say, that uh, uh, every cryptographic aspect of the application uh, in that policy, from signature to MAC algorithms to cipher algorithms to key exchange algorithms, elliptic curves allowed, uh, the size of parameters uh, allowed for RSA or DP Hellman, the protocols allowed, and even compression. Uh, our current state is that uh, GNU TLS is able to, to, to cover the whole, uh, uh, the whole set of uh, Options while on OpenSSL we are restricted to MAC algorithms, Cypher, and Key Exchange. Although we we plan to extend OpenSSL as well, the the reason, if you know, if you don't know already, is the fact that OpenSSL is very uh, doesn't allow much freedom in what to specify in the Cypher switch string. Uh, you can only specify the Cypher switch, not any other parameters. And we also have uh, paths for NSS. If you know, if you don't know, NSS is the library used by Firefox, uh, the TLS library used by Firefox to to cover also all these parameters. It's currently under upstream consideration, and we haven't included it yet in Fedora. So our current state is that uh, we have already sent uh, patches in GNU-TLS, they're upstream. That was pretty easy for me because I was the upstream of GNU-TLS. And we have pull requests in, in OpenSSL and uh, NSS. And uh, all of these are under upstream consideration for OpenSSL. For example, uh, we, have, uh, we know that upstream is very happy with these patches, but not merged yet. So we hope it will be soon. And an interesting aspect of this is that uh, after we sent this patch to, to NSS, long -term, the long term attack uh, came out. And uh, we realized that if that patch was in place with the Fedora default settings, NSS wouldn't have been uh, vulnerable to long term. And I think that that's an interesting aspect because, OK, I'm presenting here something to increase Pro proactively the security of the system, but we actually see that if we have uh, if we had managed to fully deploy it, we would have actually uh, increased the security of the system and prevent a new attack from being uh, a real threat. So uh, a few lessons learned during this deployment. Uh, uh, we have the, an initial deployment with Fedora 21, and we selected uh, very conservative settings. Uh, our default level of Fedora 21 included SSL3 and RC4. It was before the Poodle attack. And uh, it went pretty smoothly uh, because of that. Uh, when in Fedora 22 we decided to drop SSL3.0, uh, 
it didn't took more than 10 minutes to receive a bug report that we broke something. So uh, as a lesson, I would say that it's better to be conservative in the beginning when you deploy for a pilot rather than uh, be strict and say SSL 3.0 is already too old, it's broken, uh, let's drop it. Because we realize there are applications that could only use SSL 3.0, not because of Fedora, but because the Windows server, let's say, was only using SSL 3.0. And another thing is that uh, unlike CVs, where they have to be fixed uh, in a very short amount of time because, let's say, you have all the newspapers talking about you, that you are broken, and this kind of stuff, in, uh, when you send the proactive security patch to some project upstream, you have very slow report, uh, response times. Uh, you, you get probably mails that tell you, okay, we like it, we are going to evaluate it, but uh, when it actually comes to the point to merge it, it takes much time. And the, the third thing is that uh, I believe, actually, that's my opinion, that it pays off uh, having such a system-wide security level. And let's say in attacks we have seen in the last years on uh, TLS and SSL, like Poodle or the CBC cipher switch, the RC4 uh, attacks, it would have been much easier to simply change the policy and remove these uh, options from the protocol or reorder them rather than modify each and every application uh, to eliminate these options. Also, as I uh, mentioned, uh, the long term attack uh, wouldn't have been an issue. So, uh, what are our future plans? Uh, at the moment, we, our first priority is to make sure that everything is upstream. Everything we have contributed so far to NSS and OpenSSL is upstream. And we would like to include the Java SSL and TLS implementation to the policy. And that part might be easier than uh, we initially thought. And probably in the future to include OpenSSH, Kerberos, or even GNU-PG uh, there in the policy uh, so that you actually set up uh, your security level centrally all over the operating system, irrespective of uh, TLS or all the actual protocol for, for everything uh, that relates to crypto. And I have set up a tracker there on this URL if you, want, if you are interested for more information on where are we. And uh, the reason I'm actually here is because we want to make this policy not Fedora only, but uh, pretty much universal. So, and I hope I have attracted your uh, 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 your attention, and this is the project uh, we use at GitHub uh, for the policies. So, do you have any questions? Um, what about certificates? Um, are they centrally managed too? In yes. Yes, the idea, in the parameters that I presented before uh, was to, to include also certificates, let's say the size of parameters used in the certificates, in RSA certificates. Oh, uh, well, the certificates used to authenticate uh, some remote site, mm -hmm. um, for example, in Debian there's ETC uh, SSL search. Ah, you mean the CA certificates? Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, actu actually, in Fedora, we have uh, a common uh, CA certificates for uh, OpenSSL, uh, NSS, and uh, Open uh, and GNU-TLS. So we pretty much already share this. And uh, this part was about only the algorithms. Because um, if I remember correctly, uh, Firefox, Iceweasel, and Debian used them in the past, but Noma uses them because I think something upstreamish uh, changed. Ah, so uh, that's, I, I think that's pity. I, I, I'm not aware of this, but it would be bad news indeed. A problem I found when I was using security strings is that you can only use plus or minus. You can't use intersections. So when you have a large thing like system default, but you want, say, only perfect forward security strings, you can't actually say, use system defaults which are perfect for security. You have to either 
takes the system default minus everything that's not perfect for security or alternative list all the perfect security which also are member of the system default by basically manually looking through the list. That, that is correct. You, you, you cannot do so, so advanced uh, substitution there. This is, for me, a big problem with uh, any concept like system defaults because I can't really use them if I want to have guaranteed perfect for security. You, you could also set your system defaults to be only perfect for secrecy. Currently in Fedora we don't have, but uh, that, uh, that is not a limitation, let's say, of the idea. Is there also something um, uh, in progress to get more programs to be configurable? Sorry? Uh, as I read you, uh, the policy, uh, you suggest uh, for everything that is configurable to have this system policy as default mm -hmm. and to change everything that has been hard-coded to change it to the, uh, the hard-coded value to the system. Uh, yes. This, in my eyes, this has the problem that you, st it's still hard coded. So, if one application that is hard coded needs something uh, more permissive, you have to uh, keep the system wide setting uh, more per permissive for this. So, it would be nice to have uh, uh, an orchestrated effort. To uh, to bring all upstreams to have everything uh, configurable. That, that is a correct observation, and pretty much our, our approach of uh, changing the the hard coded, we, we hoped it would uh, end up in something like this. If somebody would want something worse or better policy or better security policy, he would have to send to request it from upstream. But uh, I, I didn't think it should be part of this project to, make, to force every upstream to make it configurable. Because on some applications, you may not want it to be configurable. Okay. <laughs> Time is over. Thank you for being here. <laughs>